for the Supreme Court yeah. by President Trump. Uh, what is your feeling about a vote? Does he deserve an up or down vote or not? Wasn't that an interesting rollout, kind of a reality TV rollout at the White House? And you're asking me whether we're going to be consistent. We were insisting on a hearing and a vote when it came to Merrick Garland. Right. We're going to insist on the same thing when it comes to uh, Justice uh, Neil Gorsuch. Uh, he should have a hearing and he should meet the voting standard that Supreme Court uh, nominees are held to of 60 votes, a standard that was met by Elena Kagan as well as Sonia Sotomayor, the President Obama's choices. What are your concerns about this nominee? Well, here's my concern. Nine days into the presidency, the pres President Trump's executive orders were challenged in federal court and there was a temporary restraining order issued. That's a record. So the courts are going to play an amazing role, I'm afraid, in the presidency of Donald Trump. We want to make sure they are independent, people of integrity. We're willing to stand up for the Constitution, even if it's unpopular with the president. Really? Senator Durbin, it's Willie Geist. Do I have it right that you voted aye in the voice vote in 2006 when Gorsuch was up for the federal appeals court? Good, good question, Willie, and I just don't remember, to be honest with you. On voice votes, you don't make much of a, right. a, a note on it, and it's possible. I don't believe there was a lot of controversy surrounding it. But let me tell you, he's moving from AAA ball to the big leagues here, and he's going to be the deciding vote on the future of the court for a long time, it but, appears. Yeah, the, so the, this is an important decision. The congressional record shows you did vote in favor. It was a unanimous vote. But is, has something changed in your view of Gorsuch since 2006 when you did vote aye for him? No, but, you know, just take a look at what, what has happened in the past. When someone moves up to the Supreme Court level, different, important questions are asked and people are much more careful. That's the way it ought to be. I've been through five or six of these nominees so far. We held every one of them, whether it's Obama, Bush, whoever, to that same standard. John Heilman. Uh, Senator Durbin, I'm, I, I know you've come out and said that you're going to vote no on, uh, on the nomination of Attorney General Sessions. I'm curious as to the extent to which uh, President Trump's decision to fire the acting attorney general the other night uh, has plays into that, whether your vote, your, your decision on Sessions is strictly on Sessions or whether that uh, decision by the president has played into your decision on, on the new potential attorney general. Well, it put it into context, this so-called Monday night massacre. I can remember the Saturday night massacre during Watergate. Are, 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 Elliot, are, are, Elliot they, are they the same, same here? Or, I mean, are, well, they, are, are they the same in here? The, in, they're, they're the same in this respect. In this case, an acting attorney general said the president is asking me to do something which in good conscience I cannot do. Right. That is exactly what happened in the Saturday Night Massacre. Sirica made the decision that President Nixon had to disclose. Uh, Archibald Cox was going to be fired. Elliot Richardson and Bill Ruckel's house said we're not going to serve a president who's going to fire someone who right. follows the law. It's, uh, it's, uh, we were talking obviously though about something that weighed specifically on Richard Nixon. Here was following out an executive order. I find it hard to believe that if, let's say, Ted Cruz were acting attorney general and he refused to follow uh, Barack Obama, uh, uh, an executive order, that Barack Obama wouldn't fire him immediately. I know you probably would fire somebody immediately, as would I. I if you're not going to follow uh, the, the law or implement, the, the, it, it's no problem with her having a, pro a problem with it. But Sally Yates, you've got to have somebody that's actually going to follow the law. Sally Yates is a professional, more than two decades as a federal yes, prosecutor. She is. And I've worked with her a lot. I think she's a person of integrity. Right. She just decided in good conscience she couldn't do it. I think she knew what was going to happen. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, I think she knew what was going to happen as well. But I'm saying that didn't surprise you, did it, that a president would fire somebody that refused to follow uh, their directives? No, of course not. But let me just add, that was uh, the shadow over the Sessions hearing yesterday. Right. The question that was raised by the Washington Post article, which we all saw yesterday, is the involvement of Jeff Sessions at the highest levels on these executive orders through Steve Miller and others. And Didn't the Miller work the for him? Over the yes. Week. yes yeah. as a matter of fact, so. and a, a gentleman named Reardon as well, both of them now in the White House. And so it, it appears that uh, you know Jeff has been at least behind the scenes in many of these key decisions. Would he be willing to stand up to President Trump if he thought he was wrong? I think that was a question asked over and over yesterday. So Good question. Mark Halper. Senator, a premise we have here is that the president uh, making fun of Senator Schumer and his tears from the other mm. day. 
that some of the other actions taking make it less likely that you and other Democrats would work with them on tax reform or infrastructure. Is that a correct premise? No, it isn't. Uh, I would think that we uh, are open. Senator Schumer said it as much to the caucus, and I agree with him. We are open to constructive suggestions consistent with our values. And in terms of Chuck shedding a tear, he jokes about himself that he took his daughter to see Free Willy and was crying openly at the end. So uh, he, he does wear his heart on his sleeve. Now that's maybe like actually it. be something to be embarrassed about. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, yeah, we all you. cried at the end of Free Willy. He's uh, the biggest I'm, cryer. I'm wondering, Dim I really, I, I've, I've said it, I've said it before. Movies coming. Uh, so I, I'm wondering, uh, Senator, you and other Democrats, I believe, were invited over to the ceremony last night, but chose to not go. Why? Well. I would have been a prop uh, at the rolling out of a Supreme Court nominee. Uh, and it really did sound a lot like a reality TV show as the president made his announcement and Justice Gorsuch and his wife came out of the wings and there was a standing applause. I think this is a much more serious thing uh, and we ought to take it seriously. And I didn't want to stand there and be hypocritical about it. I don't know enough about this man to tell you that I'm going to be applauding him all the way to the finish line. Right. I want to study him carefully. So you, I was, I, we you let it pass the first time, but you, you, since you've said it twice, I feel I need to, to ask. What, what, what exactly about last night looked like a reality TV show to you? That was certainly the media played that up all along. There were going to be two people, and it was going to be like The Bachelor. He was going to hand a well, rose I, to one and not, you know, and say to the other, you're fired. No, there was uh, a little bit of that, but, but, but it wasn't we, like... We didn't have that. In fact, there were some reports that you didn't even have both of them near the White House. So what, what, but, what made it look like a reality show to you? Did you hear the build-up, Joe? Hardiman drove his car from Pittsburgh. He's here tonight. He's in the wings. Will it be Justice Hardiman Who? or Judge Hardiman? Wasn't or that will the it be media Judge doing Gorsuch? Yeah, wait, yeah. That, was the media. Media. that was the media doing that, trying to juice <laughs> ratings with their countdown clock. Seven hours, <laughs> 42 minutes, okay, 33 yeah, let's just get seconds. This and, you know, but uh, it was no accident, believe me. Okay. No that would be uh, President Trump knowing how to pull the strings of the media. Mm -hmm. And I don't well, know if I would blame Trump for that. No. Well, he decides his own style points. Sure and does. He saw, showed us last night. I just didn't want to be complicit in something that I take extremely seriously. Right. All right, Senator, it's always great talking to you. Thanks so much for being with us. And okay. Thanks. We, oh, but Thank we you. have to ask Thanks. you this. Have you ever been on Manchin's houseboat before? Yeah. Uh, have I ever been on what? Joe, Joe Manchin's houseboat. Joe Manchin's houseboat. houseboat. Yes, several times. It's quite, I sure have. It's kind of impressive, isn't yeah. it? He likes to play this down home West Virginia guy. Oh, no. That this thing, is fancy. That is now like a barge. You could. Yeah. Well, it, it, I can tell you, he lives on it, and he bought it in a bankruptcy sale and got a good deal on it. <laughs> and uh, we, all, we all have a lot of good times on a bipartisan basis. So well, we're going to have did, the show there. So yeah, you better we want to have a show there. But I will tell you, the thing we loved about it is he said it's always bipartisan. If there are four Democrats, there have got to be four Republicans. That's pretty good. It is, and when he plays those oldies, the rock and roll oldies, oh, yeah. everybody's singing that. along. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, we're doing it. We Willie, heard you have that. To come. We heard. We heard his and his favorite. Dick is Durbin. Don't say it. drink S O B. Anyway. Yeah. All right. <laughs> like thank you so song. much, Senator. Thanks a lot. Good to be with you. Okay. Talk a new Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.